Salutations, Skulljackers. Automatic here for Automatic Games. I appreciate you joining me for Season 2, Episode 11 of our XCOM 2 series. In our previous episode, we were searching for a scientist in the Great Lakes region when we were called away after being informed by Resistance of the location of a downed UFO. Charlie's squad deployed, they eliminated the crew and associated personnel, then returned to the Avenger. Now we're going to resume our scan for that scientist. And uh, I'm a little distracted by the, by the notion that the, the bar is empty. Not even a bartender. I guess we could chalk it up to being, it being early in the day, but, but it's not really. Oh well. Um, nothing to see here. Let's turn our attention to the Geoscape, where we will continue that scan. And there's only two more days to go before we, uh... Okay. Well, something's come up. We're going to have to choose between three possible operations. One in the eastern U.S., one in the western U.S., and one in Mexico. And each mission would yield different results. Um, on the one hand, we could get more supplies. We could get another scientist. Or we could get an additional combat personnel member. And that, that member in question is Miles Upshore. And I did say that I, I wouldn't spend 200 supplies on Upshore. But if we complete this mission out west, we get his services for free. And we would also negate the possibility that those faceless creatures would show up in any random mission for the next month. So frankly, uh, that's the mission I'm inclined to take. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. And Alpha Squad is on deck to deploy. Alpha is, as always, commanded by Javier Valdez, codenamed Old School, and he's bringing along the flashbang. He is joined by Nelson Boyd, codenamed Noisy Boy, bringing the frost bob. Manny Fawcett, codename Manny Faces, bringing the Battle Scanner. Bailey Benton, codename Proxy, for the first time bringing the Skull Jack. Sandra Barron, codename Snugs, bringing the Mimic Beacon. And finally, Carl Ham, codenamed Lead, bringing the Med Kit. Well, there you have it. As you can see, Alpha is dressed up for winter climate. Alpha Squad, you may board when ready. Ranger deployed. Menace ready to deploy. Copy that, Firebrand. Begin your descent. Shen came across an odd series of transmissions coming out of this region, and we've narrowed it down to a hidden alien communications relay transmitting to the Advent Network. We can't pass up any opportunities to disrupt their progress on the latest operation, so we're moving in to take out that relay. Neutralize any hostile contacts near the site, lock it down, and destroy the target. Well, this game doesn't, uh, doesn't show much deference to Canada because we're not heading for the western United States. We're heading to a, uh, a suburb of Edmonton, which is the provincial capital of Alberta, Canada. Alpha Squad is boots on the ground. As previously mentioned, uh, Proxy is carrying the Skulljack in the field with him today, and should the opportunity arise, he intends to use that on an Advent Officer. Otherwise, we'll try again on subsequent missions. And this is an act long advocated by Dr. Tygen. Nonetheless, priority one remains the deactivation of that alien device. Everything else, including Skulljacking, Falls secondary to that. Squad located. And, uh, there's an Advent officer now. The Advent captain nearby would make an ideal target for the Skulljack. Yeah, Dr. Tygen, we were just discussing that. Uh, Valdez orders Proxy off to the left. Advent and out. we don't want him to go it alone. 
so. Lead here, we'll accompany him. And as it stands, there's one Advent Captain and one Trooper on the grid. So between Proxy and Lead, I think they'll be able to deal with those two handily. Besides, the rest of the squad, it's, they're just going to be just barely outside of supporting distance. Uh, because they are going to continue on to the primary objective. So, Lead is going to move off to the left. I'm on the move. And, in the meantime, Proxy, he's going to move off to the right of this two-man patrol. Not only will we get the element of surprise, but we may be able to catch the two of them in a crossfire. Hell, it's an Archon. Um, the last time we encountered one of them, we were able to narrowly avoid pitched combat. I don't know that we're going to get to enjoy that luxury this time. Lead opens up the front door to this yellow house, and he wants the uh, section of the squad that's accompanying him to take up positions inside, overlooking that Archon and the Muton and whatever else uh, was in that pod. I suppose we'll find out soon enough. Okay, the officer and trooper are doubling back just as we would want them to. And, uh, yeah, okay, it's two mutons and an archon. Intimidating opposition indeed. So, lead is gonna rein in back towards this patrol car. And, uh, as to proxy, he is gonna find better cover. Or cover, for that matter. And he'll find it behind this light pole. Scanning. As to the soldiers inside this yellow house, they're gonna set up near the windows. Position confirmed. Old school by this first story window, oh, and watch. everyone else is going upstairs. First Manny by this uh, corner window. We've got eyes on the objective. And that gives them a nice vantage point overlooking the objective device. Noisy boy, he's gonna move up at the same window that Manny's posted at. Lastly, Snugs. Actually, she's gonna go for this bedroom. Location confirmed. And she'll take up a position near one of those bedroom windows in the next round. The officer and trooper are sure enough heading right into our ambush. Lead, um, he's gonna inch ever so much closer and go into Overwatch. Noisy and Manny will go into Overwatch. Snugs, she's gonna move into this bedroom and go into Overwatch. I'm on it. Of course, old school would do the same. And now it falls on proxy. He's gonna. Go ahead and initiate combat by attempting to skulljack that officer. And I, uh, I hope this goes well. Here goes nothing, folks. They spotted us. Deploy the jack! Damn. We have complete access to the Advent Psionic Network. I have dedicated our systems to processing the new data, but we will need to work fast. It is only a matter of time before they detect our intrusion. Get from the top! The trooper, um, uh, well, Lead's gonna take a shot at him. And it's good. Well, that, that just couldn't have gone any smoother. Okay, now as to the serious opposition. Everyone is going to take a shot, starting with Noisy. Yeah. 
And we've inflicted good damage. Uh, well, hell yeah. The Archon is down. Impressed yet? Uh, one of the Mutons is wounded. That's that's an excellent start. Um. Proxy picks up a repeater. And that, my friends, is a codex. Commander, that appears to be the codex responsible for safeguarding the alien data stores. We'll have to neutralize it if we intend to recover the data. Understood. Weapons hot. We've got our target. Damn, Muton chucks a grenade, blows the floor right out from under both Manny and Noisy, both of which sustain injury. The other Mutons lining up a shot. And Noisy's down. Noisy is down. Help! Help! Proxy is panicked by that. I don't know how he knew it happened. Maybe he's just panicked by the appearance of a codex. The codex does. I don't know what. But whatever it was, it disabled Leeds weapon. About to get burnt. Oh hell. This is bad, folks. A vengeful Manny is gonna engage lightning hands and uh, draw a sidearm on that muton and put him down. He still has another sidearm attack which he'll direct toward the remaining muton. No joy. Negative damage. Snugs will, uh, direct her fire at the same target. And she scores a hit. But the Muton is still standing. Old school. He's still not detected. Well, he's about to be. And detecting old school is the last thing that Muton did. They see me. The Codex remains on the grid, as to lead. He's gonna get the hell out of that blue orb. So, uh, he'll jump behind this half cover. On the move. And attempt to reload that disabled weapon. Which he does, so perhaps it isn't permanently disabled. And that's, uh, altogether fortunate. I'm glad he got out of that orb, though. The Codex teleports. The Codex appears to be in a state of flux, existing simultaneously across multiple <sighs> dimensions. And inflicts serious damage on lead. The alien transmission is still active and we're running out of time. Get to the relay and take it out, ASAP. Proxy has pulled himself together as to lead throwing caution to the wind, and despite his injuries, he's gonna move in close and take a point-blank shot at that codex. And he does good damage, but the codex remains standing. I have never seen anything like this. The Codex is projecting multiple copies of itself into our dimension. Copied? I thought it teleported. Manny lines up a shot. Well, he eliminates one of the two copies. Proxy is gonna go for the remaining one. And, uh, to that end, he's gonna come in close and swing his arc blade. All right, the Codex has been dealt with. Excellent work, Commander. And so the grid is clear. The remnant of the Codex was left behind when it dissipated. Hopefully, it will provide some insight into the alien's ongoing plans. Snugs can't believe what happened to Noisy unless she sees it for herself. Now she does. As to old school, he's gonna move out a few feet and go into Overwatch. Essentially defending his squad. Overwatch. 
hearing about Noisy's fate. Lead rushes to the garage to see if there's anything he can do. Double time. As we know, there isn't. Okay, Manny is going to direct his attention to that target device and take a shot. And he damages it. Snugs takes that as a cue. And, um, she's going to move out a little bit. And also, and fire on the device. Primary objective complete. Get in the water here. Menace 1 5, we've confirmed destruction of the relay. The alien transmission is down. Eliminate any remaining hostiles and move to evac. Well, currently there are no enemies on the uh, on the grid. Now, despite the fact that he didn't know him too well, uh, Proxy's gonna move into the garage as well to, uh, See what happened to Noisy. Scanning. Lead is, uh, well, he's gonna go ahead and heal himself. Give him a heal. And otherwise, he's gonna approach Noisy's body. As to Manny, he's gonna relocate. Yeah, he'll head inside this house. Come in from the garage anyhow. And, uh... Snugs is gonna head in there with him. I mean, let's face it, Manny's, uh... He's upset by what he just saw. He was standing right next to Noisy. As the proxy, he's gonna take uh, some good cover here in the garage. On Overwatch. And Old School's gonna return to his previous position. Actually, uh, he'll move to the other side of the window, which provides better cover. Meanwhile, the yellow house continues to burn. It is our hope that the house fire dies down. Now Proxy is going to move up onto the roof of the garage. From this location, he's going to have a lookout. Basically watching for any encroaching advent forces. I'm on it. Ultimately, Valdez would like to use the rooftop of this house for extraction. And so he's gonna move up top and reconnoiter the roof. Essentially checking to see if that fire is out of control, because if it were, the roof is the last place he'd want to deploy his squad. Manny is gonna occupy the position previously held by Valdez, and he'll reload his rifle. Mindful that there's still Advent goons out there, Snugs is gonna step outside and go into Overwatch. Er, actually, she's gonna reload. Ready to go. Lead. Lead is gonna collect Noisy and join the squad leader on the roof. I've got it. Valdez is wrestling with the decision at this point. Does he want to engage the remaining Advent forces in this neighborhood? Or does he want to extract now? Lead is going to set down the corpse because he still has some medical duties to attend to. <sighs> Namely, he wants to see the healing Manny faces, who is severely injured. Healer mode! In fact, Lead is gonna deploy his gremlin once more. 
just to heal Manny up all the way. Go medical. I mean, if Advan throws another wave at us, we want Manny at full fighting strength. Last thing Valdez wants is to lose another soldier in this op. Well, seeing as the fire has gone out, Old School has ordered the remainder of his squad up onto the roof, except for Snugs. What he wants her to do is elicit the attention of any Advent troops out there and lure them back to this vicinity. Then the rest of the squad will rain down hellfire on them uh, from this rooftop. Doesn't provide a lot of cover, but it is a nice elevated position. And so Valdez will move up to the edge. In the meantime, Snugs has to have a look around. And she's going to start by taking a peek inside this house. While there's nothing inside, she does spot a pod on the opposite side. Unfortunately, it's another Archon and two Mutons, and they are closing in on Alpha's position. Damn. I did not want to see another repeat of that squad of, of, of the Archon, two Mutons. So Snugs wants to buy herself the opportunity to withdraw and so she's going to deploy the attention whore. Catch me outside, how about that? In the hopes that they'll focus on that and she gets to withdraw. Valdez opens fire on the Archon, scores a hit. Proxy attempts the same, but it's a miss. The Archon is going for the attention whore, fortunately. And it does some damage, uh, but the beacon is still standing. So this muton's going after it as well. That's a good deal. But the muton takes out the mimic beacon. Nonetheless, it at least distracted two of the three. Here comes the third one now. It takes a position, and it's firing at snugs. In fact, it, it's using suppression. So, unless something uh, gives, she's not going to be able to move without falling under its attack. Okay, let's see. Old school. He's going to move a little bit to the right so we can get a, get a better line of sight. And he's going to fire at that Archon. Or wait, no, that's not the Archon. Nonetheless, he'll take a shot. And he scores damage on uh, the Muton. There. Manny fires at the Archon, but it's no good. Adjusting sights. Uh, Snugs is still wondering how the hell she's going to get out of there. She uh, could throw a grenade, but, but that defeats the purpose. She'll be stuck there if she does. So no, that won't work. Okay, Proxy is going to take a shot. Well, actually, he's going to move uh, to get a better line of sight on the Archon. Moving the designated coordinates. Well, he still doesn't have one, so he goes into Overwatch. How about Lee? He reloads. We're green to go. Yeah, he, he's got a shot, so he's gonna take it. No joy. Damn. So now Snugs has to make a move. And you know what? She's gonna risk it. She is gonna attempt to withdraw, even though That'll open her up to a shot from that Muta. Come on. Nice, nice, it missed. Okay, so she's found a uh, good cover. Here comes the Archon. Proxy opens fire. 
he scores a hit. And the Archon is soaring up above the squad. I don't know what the hell it's doing now, but it's doing something. Yeah, I, I don't know what those red beams of light indicate, but it ain't good. I mean, hell, it could be an orbital strike for all I know. Um, anyhow, Lead is gonna take a shot at that Archon. And he brought it down. I am grateful for that. Did it uh, negate those red beams? No, not so much. Oh, damn. That's interesting. Um, Snugs is gonna fire a grenade and break up that Muton's cover. Or she's not. Okay, she doesn't quite have the range, but you know what? She's still gonna do it. She's just gonna advance and then fire a grenade. Oh, no, no, no. Muton gets a shot I had failed to recognize that it was an Overwatch. And it hit Snug, so she is wounded. But now she's close enough to fire this grenade and destroy some vinyl sighting, thus opening up that Muton to a cleaner shot from her squad mates. And so Manny will come out from under that beam from the heavens. He will employ lightning hands. He scores a hit. And now he'll go ahead and fire again at the same target. Muton down. You know that was good. Proxy will also get out of the uh, harm's way. And he will fire at the remaining Muton. He kills it. Well, there you go. That was the last Muton on the grid. And the last advent element in this neighborhood. So Alpha is done. Get us the hell off this roof. I needn't say that I'm unsatisfied with that operation. Yes. We skull jacked an advent officer. Yes, we completed our objective, but... The price laid upon the... Sacrificial altar just, um... It just wasn't worth it. And so this was a dark day for Alpha, their first KIA, in a day that none of them will soon forget. Especially troubling to Manny, who was standing right next to Noisy Boy, when Noisy Boy fell. That's a, that's a sight I do not like to see. Well, what can you do? Anyways, Proxy earned himself a promotion. He gets to choose between Shadow Strike and Shadow Step. Shadow Step avoids enemy overwatch. Shadow Strike allows for more damage when attacking from a position of concealment. And he's going to choose Shadow Strike. Well, I am glad that the, the, you know, at least five members of Alpha Squad returned. Commander, please thank our troops for completing what was surely a difficult task in acquiring the Codex Brain. We'll begin work on it as soon as possible. And we brought back a Codex Brain a repeater and several corpses including that of an Archon which uh, 
opens up a new autopsy for Dr. Tigan to tear into. I still don't know what those things are made of. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Spokesman. Of course, we earn the services of Lieutenant Miles Upshore, and he's a grenadier, and he will fall in with Alpha Squad, but he is no replacement for Noisy Boy. That goes without saying, I suppose. Yeah. Back to the Geoscape. And of course we have, uh... I commend your troops for their resilience in defeating this creature, Commander. The aliens will be left scrambling to recover from this setback. We have, as, as the spokesman just said, we have set back progress on the Avatar project. And we have another supplies cache out there. Um, but we also have that one that we, uh, had previously been scanning. In fact, let's see. First, we want to get back to that scientist, so I guess, <laughs> I guess I flew to the wrong spot there. Yeah, we want to pick up this scientist. The outcome of this research can only further our advances, Commander. Let's have a look. As if the typical muton wasn't aggressive enough. This hulking beast seems dangerous even in death. I will be more than happy to dispose of it once I file my report. Okay. So yeah, we get overdrive serum. So that you know, that's like a combat stim in a way. And hey, we're going to go for plated armor next. I see that work begins immediately, commander. I'll contact you when I have a full report available. Anything Working at to, uh, clinics. I saw a shut up, Tigan. Anything, uh, you know, increase the survivability of our troops in the field. The elderly and infirm so revitalized. And so, yeah, plated armor is our next project. It, it will take 15 days or 14 days, I, I don't recall, but... But it'll be worth it, I think. Absolutely worth it. Okay, back to the geoscape. And, uh... Yeah. We have enlisted the services of, uh, of another scientist, which should go a long way to appease Dr. Tigan. Um, and certainly, more importantly, it'll help us to, uh, complete uh, research projects all the faster and it appears that there are two people in the uh, in the bar which is um a contrast to what we saw earlier in the episode when the bar was completely vacant despite the fact that it was like 8 p.m. which is uh, abnormal to say the least for Lieutenant Nelson Boyd, codenamed Noisy Boy. Born January 5th, 1996. Died June 23rd, 2035. He was 39 years old. Lieutenant Boyd spent 114 days in service to the XCOM program over which time he is accredited with 11 enemy kills. His epitaph shall read. From destroying an elder statue in her first op to writing the handbook on how to deploy the frost bomb, Nelson Boyd was and remains a shining example of the ideal XCOM soldier. Services will be held in his honor tomorrow at 10 hundred hours in the Avenger Memorial. Those wishing to pay their respects are encouraged to attend. That is all. And it, it strikes me now, Noisy Boy was never wounded while in service to XCOM. 
I guess the exception being moments before he died, he was wounded by a plasma grenade. But that's, uh, that's something I didn't realize until just now. And an interesting little tidbit, to say the least. Well, as we lose one soldier, let's welcome another. Let's have a look at uh, Lieutenant Upshore's file. Let's see what his history is all about. Miles Upshore, codenamed Outlast. Born, Denver, Colorado, 28 June, 1991. Miles was a Denver reporter that famously uncovered a widespread scandal at a mental hospital in Colorado. After the invasion, he reported on the exploits of XCOM, gaining a bad reputation with alien sympathizers along the way. Once Advent came to power, he became a hunted man. And, um, you know, that's a nod to my previous series, Liberal Outlast, and if you watch that, you probably have a little insight as to the workings of Miles Upshore. He'll be an interesting addition, to say the least, but again, he is absolutely no replacement for Noisy Boy. That being said, he, he will fall in with Alpha Squad and take the slot that Noisy Boy once occupied. Anyways, I hope you liked this. If you did like it, like it. This is Automatic for Automatic Games. Thanks for watching, and if you are subscribed, I will talk to you soon, friends.